Hey, everyone. Hello. It's Rita from Miss Rita to the Rescue here for today's Cricket Chat. Um, it's Wednesday the 6th. I wasn't on yesterday and uh, because I have a head cold, but I'm feeling better today. Uh, yesterday I felt like someone stuffed cotton candy in my head. But um, I still can't hear, but then it occurred to me it kind of doesn't matter because I'm reading chat. So um, there you go. <laughs> so good morning to everyone. Um, we are in the middle of treat week, and I have a couple of little announcements for you. Uh, I hope everybody is well and they are getting ready for fall. Um, how come when you're sick, you realize how dirty your house is? That's what I want to know. Yesterday while I was sick, you know, the times that I got up and, <laughs> and I looked around uh, to, you know, whatever, go get some tea or whatever, you just feel like, um, oh my gosh, my house is so dirty and I have to clean it because that's what it felt like this morning. Uh, thank you very much for the well wishes. Thank you, everyone. So, um, yeah, so today we are going to a different mic. No, um, my ears are really stuffed up, so it's possible I'm talking really loudly, and I apologize. You might need to turn me down because otherwise I can't really hear myself talk, I think. That might be the cause, Shelly. Um, so good morning in real low. I'm coming in low. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, how's this? Is this better? Um, can't hear me talking. Well, I don't know what to do about that. Are you guys you can hardly hear me today? I'm not really sure what that is. Um, I'm trying to speak into the mic a little bit more. Is that better? Is that better? Hi. Hi, everyone. So we're having a little bit of technical difficulty. I'm not, it's really quiet. Yeah, I don't really know what's causing that. I apologize. Um, I'll get real close to the mic. Um, and, you know, I have been noticing that uh, my sound isn't quite right on my phone when I want to, like, listen to somebody on the phone. So it might be that. <coughs> okay, I'll have that checked out right away. So I apologize. You you can hear me fine. All right, I'll try to uh, get real close to the mic and to talk loudly. Um, but I do have some ear issues today, so it's kind of hard for me to determine what's loud and what's not loud. All right. So today we're going to do. Um, uh, it, part of our treat week, we're going to do candy bar wrappers. And we did these briefly last year, right? Actually, I remember when we did it, we did it on Halloween night. So we skipped over the Halloween ones and we just did like the Thanksgiving and some of the Christmas ones. So I thought it was worth circling back since Halloween's all about the candy. Um, we could have a look at what's available for the Halloween ones. But before I get started, I just had a couple of announcements from Cricket Corporate. First of all, you should be seeing, you all should be seeing a new rollout um, coming up that is going to um, help you with, uh, with uploading images. Now, I do not have this rollout today. Uh, I wanted to show you, but... Um, but Melody Lane has a great little video on it. So go over and check on her YouTube channel and she can show you how it works. It's basically a much easier way to upload photos into Design Space. Um, and so it, it's really easy. And I was trying to do it and I'm like, oh, so I'll just kind of show you. It's gonna be in the same place as before where it's uploads right here. And then when you go to upload images and hit browse. So instead of looking for SVGs, maybe you have a, um, 
an image that you want to bring in. So here's an image of one of my dogs. I'm trying to see who that is. I think it's uh, Odie. Uh, yeah, so this is Odie. And um, if I wanted to, I could erase some of the things here and cut it as a print and cut. But um, it would appear here because there are, this is the old way and the new, the, yeah, this is the old way. The new way, you're going to see a lot more on here, and it's going to be like a one-touch update. So you don't have to do all the work that we've done before with images. <coughs> so as soon as I get that, um, I will give you a little demo, but I don't have it just yet. So you will either be seeing it now, or um, you will be... Uh, seeing it in the near future so that you can uh, upload your images. This is going to make things so much easier for those people that like to make personalized projects with images like ornaments and things like that. So there, there's that. The other thing is that there is a planned outage of Design Space and Cricut.com I'm sorry, I'm talking as loudly as I can. I apologize if you, if you can't hear me. Um, I hope that when I go and do this on YouTube, you'll be able to hear me better. Maybe you can watch the replay. Um, so there is a designed outage of the software at midnight on Mountain Standard Time on Thursday. And you will, should be receiving that message if you close out of Design Space and come back in. So let me show you what um, what you should see. So you should uh, consider. There's my Cricut Design Space. I feel like I'm yelling. I apologize. If, all right. Okay. I don't know, guys. I can't. I can't talk any louder. Okay. So you're going to get this message. So beginning October 8th which is Friday, and that means Friday morning, so it's really third, like after midnight on Thursday. So it's early Friday morning that you'll have an outage for two hours and everything else should be fine, okay? Now remember, we have our Zoom call coming up on Saturday. Um, I am going to see, but I have uh, my friend Molly that you guys all have been made aware of she asked me to come up and visit her in New Hampshire and it was about uh, a month ago that I visited her before and so if I am feeling well enough because I don't want to contaminate her with anything if I'm feeling well enough maybe we can do the zoom from her house she's real sweet and I think she would really enjoy the interaction if not I will if I'm not feeling well enough um, I don't want to take the chance with her, so I will still have the Zoom call at, we'll still have it at 7 o'clock on Saturday night. That's the 9th, okay? And we are also planning on doing the doormats, those, um, those bristly quar, quar, I think they're called, doormats on Saturday morning at Create and Escape with our friend Wendy, so you'll be able to see that there. So um, that's what's going on this week. I will start doing, I've had a little setback with being sick, so I will start doing the October giveaways um, starting this weekend, I hope, and uh, we can get started on our mug press giveaway for October, okay? So let's talk about these. I, I didn't have a chance because I was sick to go out and buy um, candy bars, but look at all of these adorable candy bar wrappers for Halloween. We got a witch, we've got a Dracula, a, a pumpkin, or jack o lantern, a monster, Frankenstein's monster, a ghost, and the mummy. Isn't that adorable? And the great thing about it is that there is a little slot right here for putting in the candy. And what's great is that, I, and I hadn't really noticed it until after the fact, but there are three sizes of these available. Um, and so you, it, it, depending on what you, you know, buy for a, for
for a wrap or uh, for a candy. So, like, I think these would be good for Hershey bars, maybe Nestle Crunch, uh, and what's the other one? Special Dark, anything that's flat, these are good for. But then they also have a king size uh, one and also a wider one. So I think the wider one is for, say, uh, I think for like M&Ms and wider, you know, thicker, I would suppose that's what it means, thicker. And then there's the king size one. I'm going to show you where to get these. And it's pretty simple, but um, we're going to put them all together just so you can kind of see how they go together. They're really cute and um it really makes something special you know sometimes you just want to give a little something to someone and and you just like here's a candy bar i don't know about you guys but i always feel weird like uh giving like a little tiny thing it makes me feel like i don't know my aunt where it's like oh i got you this candy bar i don't know it's just not the um it's not the same then unless if you like are decorating it. So let's go to a new project here um, and you will see what I mean. So we're going to new project. So we have a brand new uh, canvas right here. <coughs> and um, you get there by hitting that plus sign, okay? And we're going to go to images today. Now, Images is a search engine, and I don't think I, uh, well, I did mention a little while ago that the images in image search, or all images, um, have increased almost exponentially. <laughs> There's over 250,000 images for which you can choose for your project. I am feeling a little overwhelmed by all of these images, so for me, um, I spend some time, a little bit of time um, to, these don't fit in the minis. These are regular size, by the way. These are regular size. Someone's asking about it. Um, so I, I do spend time at night sort of looking at all the new images there. And I usually do it by going to image set. So see here, this is the number of images. Now, not all of those images are available to access customers, but most of them are. So things licensed such as Marvel, Sanrio, and Star Wars, I don't know what it is. Star Wars is Disney? I'm not sure. Um, these ones here are not going to be accessed. How do you tell? There's no little A up here. So if you start scrolling down here, this cutesy little, I think it's a deer, yep, this cutesy deer, it has this A on here, and that means that it's an access image. So if you are interested in not having to search all around the world for the perfect images, I would encourage you to have a look at Cricut Access. There are so many great images here, and um, the search engine's pretty robust, although I hear things are going to um, be, they're going to be adding some better ways for us to find images. The way that I always do it is I go to all images and I search by image set. Now, this is an old school way of doing it. You might find it's easier to do search um, by just searching for the name of the proper tags, but for me, I've had Cricut Access um, since the beginning, and before that, I had cartridges, okay? So if you had cartridges, um, you used to work from the cartridge, that would be like your design space. So um, cartridges are now called image sets, but there are some old cartridges that are really, <coughs> really, really good that I um, still want to use, okay? And uh, so what I'm going to do is, because I know of this cartridge, I'm going to type in candy, the word candy. You want to keep this search fairly clean. Just use like one or two words. You know, like when you're looking for the Rob and Bob image set, just type in Rob or Anna Griffin. You could just type in Anna. Just very simple, uh, quick word, and then you'll see the results, okay? 
So here we go. Holiday candy bar wrappers comes up at the top, but I use the word uh, candy. So anything that has candy. So here's another one. Uh, celebration, celebration candy bar wrappers. And then down here is everyday candy bar wrappers, which I see something on there that I want to see. I want to look at a taco, which is kind of cute. I don't know, maybe for Cinco de Mayo or something, you could make little taco wraps. Oh, these are great. Like, look at, you can give somebody tickets to the movies and give them a candy bar that they can take with them. Or there's even, like, it looks like these are, that's an apple. <laughs> that's kind of funny. There's the taco. How cute is that? So um, I didn't even know this existed. So it, it's really cool to go and look and use just basic words, okay? So we're going to go into the holiday one. There's 53 images here. Now, what you'll notice is that um, there really isn't, they really aren't 53 images. There are less than that because there are variations on each of these themes. So, for instance, you'll see here, here's our Dracula. And um, if you want to see what it's, what it's uh, designed for, you can hit this eye with the circle and it says vampire candy wrapper wide. Okay? So for a wide candy. Um, and then let's keep scrolling. And here's another one over here. And this one says vampire candy wrapper king. So a king size, you know, like the kind you can buy at the grocery store. That's pretty cool. And then here is the ones that we're making today, these regular ones, just called regular. Now, a couple of things. Um, these are not for the snack size candy, but I'm sure you could re you could resize them if you really wanted to do it. Um, in addition to Halloween, there's all the other holidays. So there's a really cute turkey one that I'm sure I will do this year because it's so cute. And I think I found that last year. So there it is. And then there are a lot of uh, Christmas, but also Easter, St. Patrick's Day. So this is one of those ones that you're going to want to kind of earmark as one of your favorites because they're really cute. Um, so here's what we're going to do. All we're going to do is go scrolling through and finding all the ones we want. But I want to make sure I just get the ones that are regular. So I am going to, before I click on them, I'm just going to go to that eye and hit that and see if that is the right size one. These are coming up at the king size one. This one's the wide one. So, okay, let's check this out. There's a lot of wide ones. This one here looks like regular. Okay, it's regular. And is this one regular? Nope. That makes this one regular. Yes. And here's the Frankenstein regular. And here's the pumpkin. And where did my... Did I get the regular size? One, two, three. I think there's six of them. So I got that. One, two, the ghost. Forgot the ghost. All right, so then we're just going to add all of these into Design Space. And uh, frankly, th there's really nothing to tell you about like what to do here. It's just one of those cut and assemble sort of projects. But uh, I wanted to show you how the assembly goes because it's really rather cute and it's something you want to maybe uh, could keep in the back of your mind if you're the kind of person that likes to give out little treats to people um, and you want it to be like sort of a little appropriate. Yeah, now, uh, knowing me, <laughs> I would I probably have some of these in my pocketbook before holiday so I could give them to people that I happen to see or come across because that happens to me all the time. So that's what these are. So these come in, and you can't really resize them unless you have a particular size that you're trying to achieve. That's why they give you all three sizes. So if you were going to resize them, you'd have to make sure you resize the entire thing. And then you can go up here to uh, the size and sort of change the size and the width. But we're just going to cut these. Um, we're just going to cut these. 
So I apologize again if you can't hear me too well. I don't know what's going on, but I have, uh, I am talking really loudly into my, uh, into my phone, which is what does my um, recording. So I apologize for that. I think tomorrow I might try headphones that have a mic and that might be a, a better thing, okay? So we're just gonna put these together um, and so I'm gonna move you down. There's really nothing to listen to. I just wanna show you how these go together. Okay, let's start with this guy. Okay, here's the, um, the main piece of the, um, of the candy bar. And this is for the Dracula. So you see here, I have this, these two lines here that I'm folding along. And you can use either a scoring wheel if you have a maker or your scoring stylus if you have a, if you have a maker or if you have um, an explore, okay? So there's the main piece. And then we have our other pieces here, which of course I am not finding all the pieces here. Um, all right, we're gonna have to switch over because I don't, the, um, okay, here we go. All right, so this is how his uh, face, he's very plain, but you see the face goes in there and there are the, va uh, the fangs. And this is just gonna go up here to be fangs and then we're gonna put in a tie as well. So he's very basic. He's a basic Dracula. Uh, yeah, scraps are a good idea for these sort of things. Um, the larger piece, not so much, but yeah, I did use scraps for these. So um, I keep my scraps. I don't know about you guys, but I do keep them. And I keep them in a, like a bin, or bins, I should say, underneath my um, desk. So that way I always can kind of go in there and see what I have. I have a kind of like a working scrap pile that I use to the, you know, right next to um, my desk. I should show you guys sometime. So, um, because it's very hard to be organized, and I wouldn't consider myself organized, but my, um, my, most of my uh, craft stuff is organized. It's just the rest of my house that's not so organized. So in this case, we're going to close this one up, and then we're going to put the wings on. And you can close it up by, uh, you could do it this way. I was doing it this way where it's flat so that way um, it goes on flat like this all right and then we've got the wings that are going to come along the back so i think what i'll do is just put a little bit of glue here and put it there like this i might need a little more glue yeah. Okay. So, so cute, right? We're getting cute, cutesy. So there's that. Let's do the pumpkin. So the pumpkin's real cute. And it's really just uh, three pieces. So if you want something really cute, here's, uh, here's something you can give out and people, you know, that doesn't have a lot of work to it. Right, so here it is. I'm gonna fold it here along these lines. 
like that. And then I'm going to take the uh, yellow piece. It's going to go behind this like this. It's not supposed to show at the bottom. And I'm going to put the glue on the back because I don't want it to come seeping out of the eye. It wouldn't be creepy. It would just be messy looking. So here we go. Make sure you line it up here on the bottom. You're going to want to make sure you check your your uh, score marks because even if it's a little bit over that score mark, you'll have a hard time folding this up. So there is the Halloween pumpkin, the jack-o'-lantern. This is a really fun project to do with uh, a little, I think. Um, maybe if they have a class that they're going to and they want to bring something to the class, like maybe it's a trick-or-treat day or something. So a little could say that they made it. And there's plenty of room on the back if you have to put your name or whatever on there. There's plenty of room on the back to sort of jot down or use the machine to write on there. So there's the pumpkin. What's next? This one's so easy. It's just two colors. It's the goat. Again, we're going to fold it right here. You see that? Fold and fold. Flip it over. I fold it again. All right, and then we have this piece. It's going to go behind there, and there's our cute little ghost. Now, you could always, as I said, you could always embellish these, and I love to embellish, but, um, you know, whatever might be, you know, like you might want to put Happy Halloween or something like that on it would be really cute. So um, you do you. You do what's, what's going to work for you. I see you guys all the time doing that in in my group on Facebook uh, where you say oh I had a birthday party so I made it this or that I just love that okay so there's the, the ghost so they vary a little bit in in uh, the sizes so here we've got three here let's talk about the mummy because it's pretty intense. So even though the mummy has only three pieces, this is the, the base and then this goes on here. It has this. Now, um, if we are going to be cutting this out, if you, if you decide you want to do the mummy, which is nice, um, you're you're going to have to glue it in. I use this glue with the very ultra fine tip. This glue is called Barely Art Precision Craft Glue. And I am just going to dot the glue, just dot it. Just like this all around. And I don't need to have a ton of glue here. I just need a little tiny bit, and that's going to hold the piece in place, right? See, so I'm kind of trying to pick strategic places to put that glue, like this. Up here along the edge is important because that's where it might, like, lift. more here just to hold it in place so here it is I'm going to actually turn it around and line it up so 
Here we go. Now it's kind of hard not to have a lot of the glue coming through because even with the teeny tiny dots, but um, it's just, it's so cute. I haven't figured out a way to, to do something this thin except to use the um, ultra fine tip. And even then I didn't get it completely on here, you know. The mummy's adorable, I think. Yeah, and it turns out really beautiful, but you do have to be patient with the cutting and gluing of the mummy. There we go. And I forgot to fold here, but I can do it now. All right, and then we're just gonna glue this like this. Okay. Isn't it cute? So cute. La, 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 la. Okay, what's next? I think Frankenstein is next. Yeah, Frankenstein is next. So we've already done four. Uh, Frankenstein is really clever. Um, I love there are these pieces that will really show off. Um, the fact that he's a monster. I was a little bit like, what is this? But I, I'll show you in a second what that is. All right, and kind of think there's any oh yeah there's this all right so the monster you see is cut in two pieces for the head and that's just for these bolts right here isn't that cute so um here here is the head so we're going to put this head on there just so we can see those bolts Here's the final product, just so you can see. Okay, so there's the head, and he's going to go on here, and you see how it creates, like, a neck and then the hair? So it's going to go on there. So um, what I would do is I would take this piece, which is his, like, I don't know, his dress, his shirt, or whatever and I'm going to glue that in place first and then I'll do the head all right okay. then I do that and then I can take and glue the head in because it fits right here in that piece that's pretty clever. It's a nice design. And then you automatically get, here we go, you automatically get the hair. Now, what are these two pieces for? Well, they're actually toes, uh, feet, you see, and they go together like this. And what it does is these are the toenails and the feet are green. So we're going to just take this, turn it around, put a little bit of glue on those toenail bits. Just like that, okay? Then we'll put it together. Having trouble finding that. Okay, so there is my background, and it's going to go up there, and now he has the ears. Cool, right?
the feet. No, there's four. If you use medium cardstock, which is what I use, it's just the single scoring wheel. But the ones here, I actually used my scoring stylus with because I wanted to see how that came out. Um, so, because a lot of us don't have the scoring wheel, so um, I'm going to start using it more and more. But I, I've gotten into the habit of not using the wheel because uh, a lot of people didn't have it for a while there. Now more and more people are graduating to the maker and getting the tool. So here you go. How cute is that, right? There's that. And then the final one is the witch. The witch has a lot of pieces. She's complicated. Uh, <laughs> and so let's get them all here. So she's got, uh, I guess, her dress. Which I cut out in this purple. I, I probably should have did darker purple. And let's have a look at what we have here. So she has her hat. And then it's her face with this here. And then she has a little puritanical uh, buckle. And then where is the hat piece? Here's the hat piece. There is a hat piece. So here's her it. And here's the hat. So the hat has this here as like uh, the the band. So let's do that first. All right. So these go here. Right. And it's actually going to go on the hair because we don't want her to have a green head. And it's going to go on there. I suppose I could just screw the hair as well. Why a witch has green hair, I don't know. But all the witches I know, quite a few, <laughs> um, do not have green hair. I have mostly black or whatever. But All right, so here is the face. little bit for the neck piece. Um. Oh yeah, she's cutesy. I don't know, I chose this kind of like a greenish Thing because that's what I had in my scraps and uh, it indicated green. So here is her bodice or her dress, I guess, with her feet, her shoes. Okay. So tomorrow... Uh, on Cricut Chat. We're going to talk about cupcakes. Um, and there are a couple of things we can do with cupcakes, including put them in a box, a fancy box, uh, <clears throat> using what's called a cupcake wrapper, or uh, even adorning them sort of like a cake topper with a, a cupcake topper. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to all three of those things, but um, we are going to try, and we're going to actually be using a free file from our friends over at Dreaming Tree. Um, they have a very pretty fancy cupcake 
uh, box that I'm going to turn into a scary pumpkin box. I will post the link later on for you. I'll also post the link for this for you. Um, and there we go. Those are all five of, wait, six. There, there are six. We got the Frankenstein, the ghost, the mummy, the pumpkin, the witch, and the vampire. La, 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 la. Pretty cool, right? Um, and again, remember, these come in three sizes. This is the size for like a regular candy bar. So think Hershey bar or Nestle Crunch bar. Just the kind that you buy regularly. You could probably even get the Hershey with almonds in there, although it'll be a little bit thick. And that is the candy wrappers. I just love them. They're so cute. Um, thank you. So we will see you again tomorrow. I hope that I can get this problem fixed. Um, and I will use a, uh, like a microphone instead. So that way you can hear me better. I think it's just my, my phone. Thank you. Yeah, now you need chocolate. I, I was tempted. Thankfully, I was sick. I can't believe I'm saying thankfully I was sick. I was tempted to go out and buy candy to show you, but then I said, ah, if I get candy, I'm just going to eat it. So I'm trying very hard not to eat candy. Um, all right, everyone, we will see you again tomorrow as long as everything goes well. Um, don't worry, I don't have COVID. I just have, I don't know, some e either really bad allergy thing or a head cold and um, I will fix the problem. I like, think this one's my favorite. All right, everyone, have a great day. We'll see you uh, tomorrow. Bye.